Namaste, everyone, and happy Diwali, or happy Diwali. Um, this is Master Ko, and welcome. Uh, we welcome our spiritual brothers and sisters from India, and it's a special time for you. So, I'm not going to take too much of your time, and you're going to go out and party. So, just want to share some insights. And there's a video immediately after this with our instructor, Chandan Paramswara, where he goes into a deeper uh, significance, and as well as a short history of what Diwali is. Now, you might be wondering how come we're uh, doing this for an event like Diwali. You know, it's just like Christmas. You know, it's coming up soon. Oftentimes, people get so busy with all the festivities. They get so busy with all the gift-giving. and the, you know, I even dressed up for this. <laughs> okay? You know, the dressing up, the festivities, the, what do you call these, the parties. And oftentimes, they forget, as we say in the Christian tradition, the reason for the season. You know, I remember I, I grew up in the Catholic Church in Manila and then came to the United States. And of course, you know, uh, with deep roots in the Christian tradition. And oftentimes we forget, like when we have a, an occasion, what is the reason for the season? And so with Diwali, it's the same thing. I, I know quite a number of our Indian spiritual brothers and sisters. They celebrate it. They give gifts. They're all these partying. You ask them what it's about. No, no, no. It's just a happy time in their life, in their life every year. And kids get to, basically it's like Christmas in the Indian tradition. At least that's, that's what I was told. So we just want to spend a few minutes um, just talking about the deeper significance of it. That way, as you celebrate it, you can celebrate not just an external celebration, but the soul is celebrating. Okay? So Diwali, or Diwali, again, that's the best Sanskrit you're going to hear from a Chinese guy, right? Um, is often referred to as a special occasion, or the significance of that, which definitely watch the video. It's going to be uploaded. Actually, it's uploaded. You'll be publishing in uh, about 45 minutes. So it'll be online for you to watch. Of victory over evil. Okay? Now, Diwali actually means row of light. Now, how do you put the two together? So to make it a little easier, you have to understand that you, the soul, the spirit yourself, are a being of light. Okay? To just kind of break it down a little bit. Um, you know, when you move your body, right? Who's moving the body? I am. When I say feel happiness, feel joy, feel anger, feel ecstasy, whatever you're feeling, whatever feeling you have, you're having, it is the soul creating those feelings. So when you're thinking of something, same thing. You are thinking something. The soul, the I am created the thought. So the I am, the soul, is moving the body, mobilizing feelings, or creating feelings, mobilizing and creating thoughts. So this I am is called the soul. Now, the soul in Sanskrit is Atma. In Spanish, is Alma. And the funny part, this is just my craziness. I remember in class, I would say, yeah, in Sanskrit, is Atma. In Spanish, is Alma. You notice it's just one little different? Because thousands of years ago, some Indian yogi went to South America and was teaching yogic teachings, and the guy got old, so he didn't have teeth. So instead of saying Atma, he's like, oh, ma. So people say, ooh, Atma. No, anyway, I made that up, okay? Don't tell people that, oh, I know the history. I just made that up. Anyway, now it's in Italian, it's called Anima, where the word animate comes from. So literally, I am animating my body. When a person is very emotional, they're very animated, right? And when mind is jumping all over the place, they call it monkey mind, what happens? The mind is very animated. But what people don't realize, it is the animator, which is the soul, the anima, that moves the body, creates the feelings, creates the thoughts. Now, this anima or this atma, what is it made of? Well, it doesn't have weight. It's made of energy. Now, the energy we know of, uh, based on what uh, Albert Einstein said, is equal to mc square. But there's m. That energy has m. It has mass. So, the soul doesn't have mass. You cannot weigh it. So, the closest thing we can connect the soul to, if you will, or, or describe it, is something that has energy. It's energy, radius in every direction, and cannot be weighed. So, the closest thing we can think of it is light. It radiates in every direction. It moves at a certain speed. So, the soul 
is a being of light, not just regular light, but spiritual light. Now, this spiritual light could mean literally just light, or it could go deeper. So when you say victory of light over darkness in Diwali, you have to understand that light is the soul, the Atma. The question is, what is darkness? What is the contrast? You know, if you study science, there's no such thing as absolute darkness. If you have two rooms, one's darker than the other, the darker room simply has less light. So assuming you have super, super uh, good equipment, even if the room is so dark, if you have the right equipment, you still detect some photons. So it's interesting, spiritually, it's also the same. So when a person is enlightened, that means that spiritual light within them is fully active. When someone is in darkness, that means that spiritual light is dimmed down so much you can barely see it. So the question is, what is this darkness? Now, unfortunately, people on the spiritual path have a tendency to like to do hunting. <laughs> Witch hunting, crazy hunting, whatever. They always look for, oh, yeah, I know what you mean, man. You know, spiritually, when I get so spiritual, people are attacking me. The evil forces, blah, blah, blah. That. Then they immediately go into it. They don't realize you don't have to teach a kid to lie. You realize that? You don't have to teach someone to do something bad. <laughs> the question is why? Because by ourselves, we have darkness. They go, oh, I'm supposed to talk about something positive. You see, darkness is not in the sense that it's bad. Listen carefully. Darkness simply means the absence of light. So when something is less dark, that means it has a little more light than something that's darker. Now, the question is, so what are you talking about? What is this darkness? This darkness is the absence, listen, of the influence of the spiritual light that is you. Now, let's go through it. I'm going to use the chakras as an example. Because though those row of lights, let me just do this, the row of lights in Diwali are actually the chakras. You go, oh, I've never heard that before. Of course you haven't. It's barely talked about. I'm just blessed enough that my teacher, Grandmaster Chokok Sui, explained it very clearly to us. So Diwali, or the row of lights, are the row of chakras. Now watch this. By themselves, they have their own tendency. Very, very simple. Your basic chakra at the base of your spine. Its natural tendency is to help the organism survive. So if you let the basic chakra say, hey, do whatever you want, so that person will have something to eat, roof on top of their head, money to spend, no holds barred. What would happen? Okay. If it's readily available, okay, I'll take it. Make the organism survive. If not, well, you know, there's money in the bank. I just walk in and take it. In other words, there's no concept of good or bad, no more. That is its natural tendency. So if he needs to kill, he needs to steal, there's no influence to stop it. That is its natural tendency. Make sense? It's just like water normally flows. Light normally expands. Something warm usually speeds things up. It's natural tendency. The sex chakra. Well, I don't think we have to explain that too much. <laughs> it's for what? Procreation and sex drive. So that's its natural tendency. What else? The navel chakra. The navel, you know, your bell button. Its natural tendency is to what? Retain power, emotionally to be in charge, to be in control. That's the navel chakra. You know, some people in the organization go, I'm in charge. You give them a little bit, you give them a title, suddenly they're the boss. That's his natural tendency, to be in control. The solar plexus is love for oneself. So, watch this. All the chakras have their own tendency. Now, the question is, what's stopping the basic chakra from making the organism go kill and steal to have more money? What's stopping the sex chakra from making the organism to have sex 24 hours a day, go crazy and, you know, have a thousand kids and that they cannot support? And so on and so on. It is the influence of the spiritual light coming down the crown chakra 
and affecting and controlling the chakras. So if there is enough divine energy coming down, it reaches all the way to the basic chakra. It says, okay, you want to make money? You want to help the organism survive? Good. But you cannot violate uh, oneness. That means you only do it if it's not going to hurt anyone. The basic chakra says, why not? Because it's not your tendency. So if there's enough spiritual light coming down, the basic chakra will do its job, but it is under the control of the soul. So its darkness diminishes as the spiritual light comes in from the soul. So imagine that is happening to all the chakras. So Diwali is actually victory of the spiritual light over the natural tendencies of our lower nature. Our lower nature basically is a sum total of the tendencies of our chakras. That's it. It's a very simple teaching. You know, people are saying, oh, you know, there's evil forces, there's psychic attack, this and we don't need extra help. <laughs> we don't need extra help. You know, unfortunately, people in the spiritual path, they always look for other places, other people to blame. That's why they, they're not improving or life is having a difficult time. They want to blame somebody else when in reality, we have still lessons to learn. So as we spiritually evolve, which is the deeper lesson of Diwali, as we do our meditation, our spiritual practice, and we do service, more of that spiritual light comes in through us and illuminates the chakras, the row of lights. So that's literally the meaning of victory of light over darkness. The darkness is not out there. The darkness is in here. And that darkness is simply the lack of light. Now, some of you are going, what's that going to do with gift giving? <laughs> giving gifts and everything, being happy. Well, this is my speculation. I could be completely wrong. <clears throat> it's something like this. Uh, you, you hear the same lesson again during Christmas. You're going to always hear people that say, you know, all these holidays, it was constructed by people, by companies, so they can make money. Especially Christmas. Some guy, some merchants made it up so that Every year, it forces people to give gifts. All right. Some of you are probably thinking that way. It's capitalism. It's evil. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. I l listen to these people. I go, namaste, go away. Anyway, <laughs> you're missing the point. Listen carefully. Even if that's true, even if it was constructed by someone, some company that says, you know, we can do this every year, we'll... Uh, Make it that gift giving is part of Christmas so that we'll always have business for eternity. Even if it's that's true. Let me ask you a simple question. When you love someone, when you give them a gift, whether it's Christmas, birthday, Diwali, when you give them the gift, what are you looking for? Okay, let's break it down. Most of us, just the fact that I can give someone a gift that I love is just feels good to me. Okay, good, wonderful. And normally, again, there's always going to be exceptions. What happens? You get to a big old party and you start giving gifts and they open it, open it, open it, open it. And what are you looking for? Tell me, what are you looking for? Do you say, open it and you walk away? No, you open it and you're waiting for that magic microsecond. You look into their eyes and you're waiting for, they go, oh, wow, it's so something I've always wanted. And you feel the joy that they're radiating. How do you feel? You go, I was worth it. True? Not true. So even if in the big picture, it was all constructed by some merchant so that they always make do a business. But on our level, the fact that we can give and share and gives us joy, good enough? You know why? Listen carefully. We've shared with you many, many times. The heart chakra is the key. The secret is in the heart. The secret is in the heart. When the heart chakra is activated, 
through giving and sharing. The heart chakra triggers the crown. As the crown chakra gets activated, more divine energy comes down. So as you give gifts, love, compassion, caring, it activates the heart, activates your spiritual heart, more divine energy comes down, guess what happens? Then the brilliant light comes down through your row of lights and purify them. So your chakras are cleansed. I remember my sister used to tell me, she says, you know, the high beings are super duper smart. Even initially, you're giving because you have to. Even initially, you're giving because you get something out of it. Your heart is still being activated. When I heard that, I go, wow, that's a different way of looking at it. Because you're always going to hear cynical people, you know, got nothing else to do in their life but yak, 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 yak. Yeah, you know, he might gay, but I didn't really want to, blah, 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 whatever. And then the teacher would look at them. That's fine. Feel that way if you want to. Keep giving. Even if you're forced to give because, you know, if I don't give, people look at me like, oh, I'm a stingy, thrifty, cheap dude. So I'll give because I don't want to look bad. Right? So most people say, yeah, you might as well not give. You're going to be pissed off when you give. The high teacher says, no, that's good. Just keep giving. Keep giving. You see, every time you give, two things happen. One, your heart chakra go, mm, mm. right? As the heart chakra gets a little more activated, a little bit of joy lights up in your life. And then, as you keep giving, and people say, oh, thank you, I feel so honored you give, whatever it is the expression they gave. It could be made of stone, and part of it would still feel like, I feel good. And your heart chakra is still open and open. And at some point, you start feeling like, yeah, why not? It's, I know I don't have to, but yeah. Finally, you'll be, yeah, it's kind of feels good. And here's another part. Giving creates space for you to receive. The reason people don't have joy in their life because they try to hoard it. Write this down. The reason a lot of people are not happy is because they go, the only, you know, it's all this stupid thing you see in the internet. Me, myself, and I, it's all about me. Yeah, right. Okay. Inhale. In, keep inhaling. Inhale for the next 10 years. See if you can do it without exhaling. You can't. So when people only focus on themselves, it's just a matter of time. They'll get more miserable. So when you give, even if you give because there's an occasion, even if you're forced to give, it's still doing two things. It's still activating your heart, and guess what happened? You're releasing energy, and you're creating space for good things to come into your life. That's it. Simple teaching. That's when, like, when I hear people complain, oh, I'm forced to give, but go, I look at them like, yeah, one day you'll learn. Hopefully not one of these lifetimes that you learn in this one. St. Francis says, it is in giving that you receive. That's why, I, I know, this is going to get a little touchy, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, when people just focus on self-love, and that's all they focus on, just watch them. At some point, they can say, oh yeah, I love myself, take care of myself. Good. You just watch. If it's just input, no output, one day, they get worse. Guaranteed. It's just like, the secret to joy and happiness, giving, receiving, giving, receiving, giving, receiving. Not take, 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 take. Not give, 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 give. There has to be a balance. That's why in a special occasion like Diwali, you give gifts. When somebody gives you something, say thank you, accept it. Give them the opportunity to open their hearts. When somebody gives you a gift, say thank you. I really appreciate it and really mean it and fully absorb the love that they give with it. You know why? It's good for you. It's definitely good for them. It creates space in them to receive more love. It's that. Simple.
Don't waste your time sitting there. Yeah, oh, you know, all this stuff is just all put together by people who want to make money, blah, blah, blah. You look at these people who say that, they're miserable. So I look at them and go, oh, whatever, oh, who cares? You can keep being cynical and be miserable. Nothing you can do about it. It's already here. Make the most of it. It's Diwali. It's Christmas. It's holiday. Whatever. Use that opportunity to open your heart, to give and share. And when somebody reciprocates that love, say thank you and receive. Receiving. I heard this, this uh, last week when I was at Tony Robbins' event. <clears throat> One of the speakers says, Receiving does not mean you're a taker. I think some of you go, <gasps> Anybody got that? Just because you receive does not mean you're a bad person. That's the mistake a lot of people, but I'm a giver. You know, you always hear people that say that. They're always like emphasis, I'm a giver. I'm not a taker. So that's why I don't want to receive anything. Uh-huh. Keep exhaling without inhaling. Good luck with that. So write it down. Receiving does not mean you're a taker. You're a taker if all you do is receive and never give. Okay? Anyway, I know Diwali is supposed to be very, very happy and everything, but I just want to keep it real. Learn to give, learn to receive. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a short meditation. Now that hopefully you internalize the lesson. Again, there's a video, <clears throat> after I'm done with the meditation, there's a video, it's already uploaded. It, it will start playing at 8 o'clock, which is 30 minutes from now, with Chandan Paramswara. It gives you the authentic Indian tradition. It's just like, uh, you know, he grew up with it. He's a Sanskrit scholar, so he'll give you the deeper teachings on that. I just give you the practical stuff that will kick your butt so that you will have better understanding of what's going on in the world instead of being stuck with all these cynical people who complain. Every occasion should be harnessed by the soul to awaken the heart, awaken the crown, to accelerate your spiritual development. Period. <laughs> Full stop. Be it Christmas, Diwali, Easter. You know, you can name a thousand different holidays. For me, they're all the same. It's an opportunity for you to learn and grow. That's it. Okay? Shall we? <clears throat> Let's ask for blessings, huh? To the Divine Supreme God, or in Sanskrit, to the Supreme Parabrahman, to all the great spiritual elders, to all the holy gurus, maha gurus, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my beloved and respected teacher, Master Tohok Sui Maha Guru Jameling, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and protection. We thank you. In full faith. Okay. Now, so just to kind of, the meditation will use a little bit of, of Sanskrit terms. The soul is Atma. The, so basically you have the soul, the higher soul, the spirit, the spirit is called Paramatma, higher, higher soul, okay? The God is called Parabrahman. Brahman is God, Para is supreme. So we'll just, in using the this occasion, we'll use those terms, okay? So put your hands on your heart. Repeat after me, I am that I am. I'm not this body, I'm not any of my emotions, I'm not any of my thoughts. I am the soul, the Atma. The Atma that moves the body, feels the feelings, and thinks of those thoughts. I am that, the Atma, the soul. I, the Atma, am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that. The Atma, the soul. Be still.
I, the soul, am one and connected to my higher soul. I, the soul, am connected in one to the divine spirit in me, the Paramatma. I am a child of God. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. There's only oneness. I am one with the Paramatma, the Supreme God. Be still. To further activate our heart centers, open your hands in blessing. We'll do the meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grandmaster Twahok Sui. Be aware of your heart in your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with peace and with love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. May the people in different parts of the world who are going through troubling times and suffering, the people of Iran, the people of Ukraine, different parts of Africa, the Middle East, Central South America, and different parts of the world that don't make it into the news, may they be blessed by the Parabrahman with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. So be it. So be it. Where there's darkness, let me sow intense spiritual light. As we celebrate Diwali, may all beings be blessed with divine light. May this divine light overcome any form of darkness or ignorance of their divinity. So be it. As it said in Islam, everything is God. God is in everything. There is only light. And where there is sadness, let me sow joy. Be still. Now, be aware of your heart, take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown, exhale, and stay there. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. So much golden light. Let that golden light from your crown flow down through your hands and fill the entire earth. From the heart of the Parabrahman, May every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. Just be aware of your crown in your hands. Allow the blessings of the Par Brahman, the Supreme God, to flow through us as one, blessing every person, every being on earth with peace, with love, with kindness, with sweetness, with mercy and compassion for all, so be it. So be it. Now, be aware of your heart and your crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. Exhale, imagine golden light flowing through us and filling up the entire earth. Bless your family your relatives and friends, the people you work with. Just let that intense golden light bless every person, every being in your country, the surrounding countries. Let it spread throughout the entire earth. You may focus that intense golden light on the people of Iran, Ukraine, 
different parts of India, North, Central, South America, Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, may the entire earth be filled with brilliant, brilliant golden light. From the center of the heart of the Parabrahman, may every person, every being, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, as well as the lower worlds, may all beings in every dimension and every direction, above and below, be blessed. With the blessings of the Parabrahman of peace, of love, of kindness, of inner healing, emotional, mental, as well as financial healing. May all be blessed with goodwill and the willingness to do good. So be it. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. And so it is. So it is. Now, lower your hands on your lap. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just be still. Above your crown, there's a brilliant, brilliant golden flame. Just look at that golden light. That brilliant golden flame. Simultaneously, from your heart, send a stream of love from your heart up to the crown and into that golden light. Ah! Be still. Look at that light. Just look at that light. You're not the body. You are that light. You're not any of your emotions. You are that light. You're not any of your thoughts. You are that light. Be still. You are a being of radiant light. Just be still. You're part of a greater light. Just listen. Om. still be aware of that inner light that is you Above you, there's an even brighter light. Brilliant, brilliant, almost blinding light. Just look at that light. The image doesn't have to be clear. It is there. Just listen. I will chant the mantra, Om Namo Para Brahman Om, which simply means, I, the spiritual self, salute the absolute supreme God. Just allow yourself to be super, super absorbent to the brilliant, brilliant light, especially on this special Diwali evening or day. Be still. Om Namo Parabrahman
I, the Atma, salute the Absolute Supreme God. Om Namo Parabrahman Om Om Namo Parabrahman Om Be still. You, the Atma, are immersed in a universal ocean of light, universal ocean of love, universal ocean of power. Be still and just simply allow your consciousness to melt into that ocean of light. Maintain your stillness and awareness. Let's allow that brilliant, brilliant light of God, of the power of Brahman, to go down through our row of lights of Diwali, our chakras, purifying and empowering. Just be still. The brilliant, brilliant light from the Supreme God the power of Brahman is pouring down into your crown chakra. Your crown chakra is filled with brilliant, brilliant light. Your forehead, your ajna and back head chakras are filled with brilliant light. Your throat chakras are filled with brilliant light. Your front back heart chakras are filled with brilliant light. Your front back soul plexus chakras are filled with brilliant light. Your navel, your sex, your basic chakras are filled with brilliant light. All your major, minor, and mini chakras are saturated with this brilliant, brilliant light. Your row of lights are all lit up with the blessings and the light from the power of Brahman. Let it flow through your entire body now. Be still and receive. Absorb and assimilate. Let it happen. Now repeat after me. I completely, deeply, permanently and gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate the divine light, divine love, and divine power from the power of Brahman. So be it. So be it. So it is. Now be still and absorb. Now 
more gently, slowly, raise your hands. Picture the people you love in your life, especially in this special occasion of Diwali. Feel the love, the joy that is you. And just picture you love, people you love in front of you, shower them with this love as much as you can pour into them. Fill them with love, with sweetness, with kindness. Especially the people you know going through troubling times in their life. Fill them with love, with hope, with joy. No matter what's happening in their life, they are still a being of light. A droplet of light in an ocean of light, which is God. Bless your family, your friends. Fill them with this beautiful, beautiful golden light. As we celebrate Diwali, let there be victory of the spiritual light over our lower nature. Let there be love, kindness, sweetness, forgiveness. May divine mercy and compassion be with all beings, so be it. So be it, and so it is. Allow your entire being to be a transmitter of this brilliant, brilliant light. So in Diwali, it's victory over darkness. Let us all be channels and pipelines for this brilliant light to overcome all darkness, so be it. Just keep your tongue on the roof of your, your mouth, be still, and let the energy just flow through us. May all be blessed without exception, so be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine, put your golden light down into the earth. Fill the earth with golden light. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it. Okay. Open your eyes. <clears throat> How is the meditation? So you have a better understanding of Diwali. Victory over darkness through the row of lights, which are your chakras. Now, it's customary that um, we invoke or receive a blessing for prosperity. And a lot of you have already heard me say this before. Prosperity and spirituality are two sides of the same coin. As my teacher says, money in the hands of good people change the world. The more prosperous you are, with a good heart, good intentions, you can now help more people. So that said, uh, we'll ask for a special blessing for our prosperity center, which is the basic chakra. Now, we always want to make this, uh, how do you call this, uh, experiential. So I want, you make, I want you to feel it as it happens. So visualize you looking at your own back. Your basic chakra is um, <laughs> basically in between your cheekbones, <laughs> in your butt, basically, okay? Not this cheek, the other cheeks. So, as you look at your back, I, be, I better be serious, some of you. <clears throat> okay, just put your hand like this, and then visualize your back and say, my prosperity center. Okay, just feel it. So, whatever you feel, just keep your hand there. Ready? You don't have to do anything, just keep your hand there. And just keep your tongue in your palate and listen. Om Maha Lakshmi Vidmahe Vishnu Priyaye Dimahi Tano Lakshmi Prachodayat Om Om Maha Lakshmi Vidmahi Vishnu Priyaye Dimahi Tano Lakshmi Prachodayat Om Om Maha Lakshmi Vidmahi Vishnu Priyaye Dimahi Tano Lakshmi Prachodayat Om. Oh. 
ओम महालक्ष्मी विद्महे विष्णु प्रियाय धीमहि तानो लक्ष्मी प्रचोदयात ओम ओके यू नो व्हाट इफ यू समथिंग Anybody feel your basic chakra expanding? All right. Anyway, Namaste, everyone. Happy Diwali. May you and your family be blessed with much light, much love, much, much happiness and joy. And uh, stay tuned. In about four minutes, three minutes, it should start playing on Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's a, a short lecture and just the deeper significance of Diwali. Uh, in the Indian tradition, it's going to be Chandan Param Swara. Stay tuned for that. Namaste. We wish you much happiness and joy. And may the Par Brahman and all the great spiritual teachers, holy masters, bless you and your family always. Namaste. Thank you.